This is Angela here, and today I'm going to be talking about the narcissistic personality disorder and a common tactic that the narcissist uses called lies by omission. All right, baby. Okay, you want to get down? Ouch. Sorry. My cat is a very nervous animal. Okay. Um... First, before I get into the video, I want to clarify something because sometimes I say things and I believe that unintentionally I might get the um, viewer confused. Okay, so I'm going to clear something up about Facebook again. Okay, in one of my videos I had said that I had gotten kicked out of a Facebook group because... I had commented on the um, in the group, and I had asked the question in the comment section. You know, uh, I had asked if um, any other viewers had uh, uh, mothers who were hoarders had that had that OCD combination uh, with the cluster B personality disorder, and a couple ladies had said that they did that they did and I had made a quote um from I had quoted something in the comment section that I saw a doctor say on a TV show about hoarding and th the doctor said it's like saying my stuff is more important than you and without understanding or realizing because I really don't understand a lot about that matter about OCD mental illness I'll be honest I really don't understand it and um the the lady of the group uh, had, who had kicked me out the owner she admitted she that she was a hoarder and she was quite offended by the comment um I felt very bad that I hurt this lady okay and I also you know got kicked out of the group and I understood it was like I felt that it was wrong for me to ask the question and out of my ignorance I really didn't know you know that um, possibly narcissistic abuse survivors could also be hoarders and it's just a subject that I'm not going to talk about anymore like unless I discuss it in my on my own channel I'm not going to discuss it on Facebook and I don't and I do not belong to any Facebook uh, I, I do not participate I have one Facebook group that I had joined regarding narcissistic personality disorder but I, I, I never comment and I never go on it then there was this other Facebook group that was called daughters of narcissistic mothers no contact only and I'm like well maybe you know this would be a great group for me because um I'm no contact and it'd be nice to hook up with other people with no contact and what happened was um, there was a lot of people that were not at the point where I am right now and I really felt that I couldn't benefit for, from that group and I really felt that I had nothing to contribute so I pretty much didn't agree with some of the things that they were saying but I kept it to myself you know like they like okay I had First of all, I am um, a believer in um, healing through forgiveness. Now, other people disagree with me. I'm not saying that they're wrong because everybody's entitled to their journey on how they feel about w whatever works for them. Okay, But for me personally, forgiveness has given me a lot of healing. It doesn't mean that I'm going to reconnect with the narcissist. No. But... It has helped me to heal and it is helping me in my relationships with my loved ones in the present day, like my man and, um, you know, my kids and my grandson and just doing what I need to do, okay, and moving forward. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's really good, but this, but this group, you know, um, you know, they, they didn't believe in codependency. They thought that codependency was inaccurate and different things like that. And I, was, and I, I didn't want to get into it with them. I totally disagree with them. You know, I mean, Ross Rosenberg does, Dr. Ross Rosenberg, excuse me, 
does a whole uh, segment on codependency and the narcissist. And, I, and you know, it's like, I, so I kind of didn't understand where they were coming from and we weren't, we, we weren't on the same page. So I just unjoined the group. I didn't fight with people. I didn't say, no, you're wrong. I didn't challenge them because I, I, I just, you know, it was like, it's not for me. Okay, so now you understand that I was in two Facebook groups, one that I got kicked out of and one that I left, just so there's no confusion or, you know. And that's the point that, um, and this particular thing that I just pointed out about Facebook is exactly the reason why I'm doing this video. Um, if anybody ever has any questions to the details that I'm talking about with regard to my journey with my narcissistic mother and or my golden child brother or the lost children or anything like that. You know, I I I can openly answer anyone's questions to where to where the truth, you know, the truth should never be reframed. It should never be buried or it should never be well buried if it doesn't if it, you know, if it's just some personal thing with regard to you and nobody else where it does, it's irrelevant, then yeah, it's okay to, to bury the truth because you want to just move on. Um, but when it comes to reframing and different things like that and triangulation and flying monkeys, the purpose of this video is to talk about how flying monkeys are created through triangulation and how the narcissist spins this web to uh, to confuse people and to get people as their supply. That's what a sociopathic narcissist does. And here's what happened. And I've talked about in another this in another video, but I'm going to talk about it again. Just to pinpoint how you need to question things. You need to question things when somebody's disclosing information. Well, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so this is what happened. My mother, back in 2009, my son Patrick, myself, my sister Natalie, my disabled sister Jerry, and my mother were all living in my mother's house. Okay? My mother was a hoarder. She needed some help. I gave up my apartment to move in with my mother because I felt, I mistakenly believed that I could get my mother into mental health treatment, get her house cleaned up, and have her um, have some type of quality of life. And it was the biggest mistake that I ever made, reconnecting with my narcissistic mother and get trying to get close to her like that. That was the biggest mistake I ever made. And you know, it started when she came when she was in my apartment. And um she basically, you know, um she's a histrionic narcissist and histrionics according to what I've read about this personality disorder is two things. Number one, a histrionic is extremely gullible. And number two, a histrionic is a person that likes to be of the princess. It's like you have to serve the histrionic's needs. The histrionic does not have time. Like, like in the case of Diane Downs, who, who was like a histrionic narcissist, but she was like to the extreme because she had shot her children. Her children were a burden to her. Her children couldn't serve her needs because children need to be attended to. And that was, that was my mother. Okay? That was my mother. My mother didn't commit homicide, but the other elements of the personality disorder were my mother. It, it was not her problem. Okay? It was not her problem. So the triangulation and, um, what happened was, okay? 2009, my son Patrick is working at the water rice factory. Okay, he worked for a distributor. He didn't work for like your little mom at the, the corner water rice place that served, dipped up the water rice. He worked for the distributor. So they used to have tons of water rice that they used to give the employees. They used to give them quarts. 
So Patrick came home and he had five quarts of water ice. And there was like cherry, apple, whatever. And he said, um, my mom and I, we were sitting out on the porch. It was summertime and it was right before the wicked traction chapter happened. And, you know, my mom, my mom's going, my mom is, uh, I mean, my son said, you know, you can have any, any, any flavor you want. Okay. You can have anyone you want. Don't touch the cherry vanilla because that's the one that I picked for myself. But you can have any of the other ones. Okay. So my mother's like, fine. I won't touch your food. And we're like, what are you talking about? There's plenty in there. Just go grab whatever one you want. She then turns around and she goes to the senior center during the day during that time. Okay? And she tells um, the uh, people, the, the, the social workers at the senior center, that we're not, she wasn't allowed to touch touch our food. That we were denying her food, and she wasn't allowed to touch that touch food. So you see how the truth gets twisted and reframed. It's like the truth then to the narcissist becomes, um, we're not we're abusing her, and we're not she's not allowed to touch our food, her, uh, her son's food, and as a result, bang. Here comes the flying monkeys. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, my God, that's so terrible. And, you know, like that, getting supply from the other seniors, especially the men. How do I know this happened? The neighbor across the street who went to the senior center came over to me and said, Hey, listen, I got something to tell you. Your mother's turning around, blah, blah, blah. And she's telling me just what I t I'm telling you all here. Okay, and the, and the neighbor wasn't buying it because the neighbor knew us, the neighbor Myrna, she knew us intimately and the neighbor knew that I wasn't that type of person. And she said, I know your mother's lying because I see your mother with money and she's always out there buying something. And she's telling people that you girls are living in her house for nothing, okay, and not getting money. And this is this is what the narcissist does. I'm sorry, I know I'm getting loud, and I hope this video doesn't go on too long. Another thing was my brother's wedding. Okay, my brother's wedding, and I don't remember what year this was, but I do remember this event. She goes, my brother, and this was in the 1990s because my brother had gotten married in 1993. This is the golden child. Okay, and it doesn't matter if he's the golden child. The golden child gets, gets, gets crapped on too. Trust me. The golden child gets treated better, but they're also crapped on in a different way. Um, the golden child, she goes to him and she tells him, I want to pay for your wedding. And I want to help you. I love you. Blah, blah, blah. And this, that, the other. And, you know, in front of his face, she's telling him that she wants him, you know, she wants to help him. Behind his back, she's turning around and like the martyr that she was. I gave my whole paycheck to pay for my son's wedding and I had no money to pay my bills. Really? Really? Well, that, 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 that wasn't true. Cause I'll tell you what the truth was. The truth was that my mom was having this affair with this old dude, okay? This old dude was giving her, giving her petty cash. He was paying for the mortgage. He was paying her bills. She was, she was, she was doing this behind my dad's back, okay? Cause I saw, I caught her doing it. And the reality was that this freed her up to give her whole paycheck to my brother to pay for his wedding. But at the same time, her bills were being paid. 
And this is how the triangulation and the flying monkeys are, are, are um, created. Because the flying monkeys are believing the narcissist without realizing that there's a different explanation for it. And that's what they do. They lie by omission. They lie by not giving critical details. And if you ask the narcissist to explain things and they don't have an explanation as to what the truth is, guess what they're going to turn around and do? They're going to turn around and they're going to rage. And this is what I'm saying, okay? Listen to what I'm saying to you. Listen very carefully. You got to take a step back and you got to question things that people are telling you. And people are leaving out details because they can't tell you. But they're telling you things that you want to hear. Listen, if you can't, if a person can't tell a whole story, because of some private information, then they shouldn't tell the story at all. Okay? Because the whole truth, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth should be told when explaining a story. I told a very serious story, okay, about the FBI being contacted and, 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 and stuff that my mother did. That was all true. And I provided details which support the truth. I provided legal documents that I obtained legally, okay, through a criminal case that happened with my son because my son came down the steps and he pulled a shotgun on this guy because this guy was terrorizing our family. The shotgun wasn't loaded. He didn't pull the trigger. And it accelerated into this violence, but, you know, into, into something that was becoming very violent. And this, this is the reason why the law got involved, okay? And that's a whole other story. I explained all that in my videos. But the purpose of this is to try to teach you all that you got to really pay attention when people are telling you a story. Another example of triangulation and bullshit that my mother put put out there um, and told people was when I moved into her, into my grandmother, not my father's mother, my mother's mother's old house. That house had been vacant from 1990 to 1995, okay? And I moved in that house in 1996. Okay, the house was in very poor condition. It was loaded with trash. It, it, the, there was no plumbing. Okay, it was in very poor, bear. it couldn't be rented out. It was depreciating in value. And I needed a place to go because at that time, um, I had broken up with the guy that I was living with who was, who I was actually engaged to. We had broken up and I needed a place to go. And um, so she's like, why don't you come and live in the house? On the one hand, she wants she, she wanted me to live. She wanted to help me. She wanted her grandchildren to help her grandchildren to have a place to stay. And I literally emptied out my bank account at the time, which was about six thousand dollars, just to ha get the plumbing working, and n not to mention the serious hoard that she had you know, put in that house and it's like the it needed electrical work. It was basically a fire hazard. There was no way that that house could be rented out. And and I was paying utility bills on it. I was paying the real estate taxes on it. I put like six thousand dollars in repairs and she turns around and she's telling people, I let my daughter live in that my daughter's living in my house for nothing. Okay, twisting the story, twisting the story, making it sound like I'm taking advantage of her, but conveniently leaving out the details of what I'm just telling you, that the house was in extremely poor condition, it was loaded with trash, it needed a, I had to pay $1,500 for, for a plumber to come in, break the wall, and put a new sewage pipe in there. Then the wall had to get repaired. Okay, who's going to rent a house out like that? Who's going to rent a house out like that? Would you want to rent a house that 
would, had holes in the walls, okay, would, didn't have plumbing, okay, you know, it, 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 the electrical, it needed an electrician too because it was basically a death trap. But according to her, I'm using her and taking the bands of her. And then to my faces, you know I love you. You know I care about you. And this is the way they create flying monkeys. This is the, way, the lies that they tell. They, like the prosecutor said in the Jody Arias case, in the closing arguments of Jody Arias case about a master manipulator, the narcissist. He's, he said, the narcissist, he said that he didn't call her a narcissist. He called her, he did call her a borderline. But he said that um, they build their relationships on lies. She built her relationship on lies. Okay? And basically what he did was he went through and explained the process of the lies. And how they lie is lie by omission, by leaving out specific details, to support the reality of what the truth really is. Watch out for the narcissist. Have a great day, everyone.